Hello, this is Manic Recurring with ManicRecurring.net here, and I intend for this video to be basically an example birth chart reading, as you can see from the title. I've actually posted many birth chart readings in the past, but all of them were at least nine months ago or so, I believe. So none of them are actually representative of the style that I would currently make a birth chart reading. You know, I have kind of tweaked things over the months and years and, you know, changed things up a little bit. So basically, you know, once I start this reading, it will be exactly what you could expect from a birth chart reading if you were to get one from me nowadays, basically, currently. Um, and before we jump into the reading, I did want to cover a little bit of information. So um, I did want to mention that all of this is speculation. A lot of people say, wow, you know, it's almost kind of revealing or they feel kind of naked because because I can see so much about their, their life. And really, to be honest, I don't feel that way at all. Um, <clears throat> because really everything I'm saying when I do a birth chart reading, I don't know to be true. I definitely don't know it to be true in the sense that the person receiving the reading would know it to be true. Because... I always say this is all speculation. Um, now hear me out, like I, I am uh, overwhelmingly correct most of the time, but that doesn't change the fact that when I'm doing a birth chart reading, I am only speculating. I'm only looking at a chart like what you're seeing now, and I am interpreting and kind of, you know, speculating, like I say, based on the placements, the aspects, the houses, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, You know, I'm... I'm always learning, I'm always growing, you know, and that's why I do these readings as well. Um, I will say that I'm told I am 90 to 100% accurate when I do these readings. Sometimes it is hard to measure truth or accuracy with these things, um, but for people who do get the readings, they say I'm at least 90 to 100% accurate. So on the one hand, I feel like it's total speculation when I'm doing these readings. I don't know any of it to be true necessarily. But on the other hand, you know, I do have a track record that is, I wouldn't say impeccable. That was the first word that came to mind. I wouldn't say impeccable necessarily, but it is, I think, overwhelmingly accurate for sure. Um, okay, and then let's break down kind of the way these readings go, because over the months and years, um, you know, these, I've, I've basically come up with a formula for how I approach these things. And I've divided the reading into category, category, categories, um, <clears throat> which recently I started doing timestamps for. I think this is kind of a nice feature. It makes it easier if you want to come back to a certain part of the reading later. So basically, I start out with the general personality or, and life themes. <clears throat> I want to mention, too, that, of course, you have free will. So, um, you know, I can't, I can't judge, you know, what you would do with your free will just based on your chart. Um, but I can speculate based on your placements what themes you will deal with for your entire life. And because of those themes, they do tend to draw out certain personality characteristics, if that makes sense. So there is a lot you can see about personality from a birth chart like this, you know, even taking into account free will, if that makes sense. So the first part of the reading is kind of the most basic general personality life themes. You know, we look at your definitely sun and moon among you know other placements like the the inner planets um yeah pretty much just you know i think that's the simplest part i'm not necessarily trying to guess every little part of your personality but i can definitely see some large themes that you would deal with and you'll see all of this once i jump into the reading of course after that um there are three other parts to the reading which i do in no particular order really i can kind of move these around a little bit um, but a typical way it would go would be next, I would do, I, I group this into one category. So childhood, past life themes, and challenges. I feel like all these kind of, because of what placements we look to for these things, they kind of end up grouped together. Um, you know, much of this is based on the south node, the IC, Saturn, you know, the, the, the nodal axis in general. Um, you know, all these are very karmic placements that have to do with not only where you come from, like past life history, but also where are you going? What are you meant to learn in this life? Things like that. Um, you know, I think that part of the reading can definitely be very heavy, but I think a lot of, 
a lot of the people who are seeking readings don't mind the heaviness. They're actually seeking that. Um, what else can I say about that? That's pretty much it. Let's move on here. So after that, um, I call the next category occupational. So that would be, of course, job related. Um, you know, everyone wants to know about money and love, right? So, um, so yeah, you know, I think with most charts, I can't predict exactly what you should do career wise. Most people have a diverse enough set of a diverse enough skill set that they could do many different things or multiple different things. But I can at least with every chart see the strengths that you have as a person, some really, you know, quality strengths that stand out that you could perhaps use in a career. Um, and I can also see what you might need from a career. Some people need to be very independent. Some people don't want to be independent. They want security. They would rather work maybe for a larger company or something. Um, you know, I can see things like that that are suggested by the chart. I have had charts that do have a very narrow uh, skill set or, um, you know, a very specific kind of of range. And, you know, then I can predict, I have predicted exactly what you know, the careers that they did turn out to have. But like I said, most charts are not that way. Most charts, you could do this or that. You know, I could see if you'd be great with hospitality or if you'd be kind of a business owner, entrepreneurial type. You know, I can I can at least get it into kind of a range, if that makes sense. Um, okay, and then next, and this is actually becoming a kind of longer section, but um, next would be romance and compatibility. Um, you know, I think that's, kind of straightforward I can see what well I can see what, you, what you'd be most likely attracted to in another person are you attracted to someone really outgoing or someone more shy or, you know and and also astrologically what kind of signs would you be attracted to a, a lot of this you can see with the placements of Venus and Mars um, but I also love to talk about the descendant in astrology a lot of astrologers don't even really take into account the descendant uh, nearly as much as they should in my opinion when it comes to especially long-term compatibility because the the ascendant descendant axis to me really represents the kind of ultimate or um the ideal relationship that i see you being in so for example like are you meant to be the leader the initiator in the relationship and you're meant to be with someone a little bit more easygoing um or you know, are you the responsible one and you're with someone who's a little bit more idealistic and creative, uh, that type of thing. And then, of course, you know, we can always bring that into astrological terms. What kind of sign would you be best with in a long term situation? And of course, no one is just one sign. I think that should be pretty obvious, you know, from these types of readings. But I can see, <clears throat> for example, like in the chart that we're about to analyze, the descendant is in Virgo. So that would suggest that this person is probably going to be with someone at least at one point in their lives who has ma major Virgo placements, major Virgo energy. They don't have to be Virgo sun necessarily, but that is definitely very possible. Um, but they could also have other, you know, inner planets, uh, definitely very strong planets in Virgo, or or at least they will have traits reminiscent of Virgo. Um, okay, and then other than that, you know, after that, I kind of just closed it out with, um, usually at the end of a reading, I like to, <clears throat> I like to just take a moment and just kind of look around to see if there's anything that didn't come up in the, you know, in the rest of the reading that I wanted to mention. Sometimes I will talk about major transits that people are experiencing, you know, if they are just leaving a really important transit or if they're just about to enter one. I like to give them a little heads up if there are major changes that are likely going on in their lives. But for the most part, uh, this is not a transit reading. This is a birth chart reading. So <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is mostly not about transits. But like I said, if I do conveniently see a major transit going on in the near future or near past, I will, of course. I, I feel like it's kind of my duty almost to be like, hey, by the way, you have a kind of major life-changing thing that you either just completed or are just about to enter. Okay, but with that being said, let's get into the official birth chart reading. And we're almost at the 10-minute mark, so I'm going to wait just a couple seconds. <clears throat>
Hello, this is Manic Recurring with your birth chart reading. For this reading, we're going to be looking at Tuesday, January 23rd, 1945 at 11, 11 a.m. in Topeka, Kansas. So for your chart, you have Sun in Aquarius, Moon in Gemini with Pisces rising. The rising is at the very last degree of Pisces, but it is still in Pisces. <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me so just looking at your kind of big three here uh the first thing that stands out to me is you have you know sun and aquarius with moon and gemini these are both air placements so they're both suggesting that you are very mentally oriented you may be a little bit emotionally detached you're very interested in people and you're excellent when it comes to acquiring information you love learning you love um, you love all information. So you love, you know, getting those little tidbits of information, just kind of trivia and things like that that aren't so serious. But you can also tackle some very complex quandaries, <laughs> some very complex subjects um, ranging from philosophical to probably a lot of, you know, non-fictional, like kind of academic type of stuff. Um, but yeah, air signs love to learn they, and they love... Um, they love people too. Some of them are very social and some are a little bit more aloof, but either way they love um, kind of learning about people, if that makes sense. Um, with Gemini Moon, you probably think a lot. There's, you know, your mind is constantly racing, constantly going, um, you know, it's constantly analyzing, observing, picking up lots of information. Another interesting thing is your Moon is conjunct Uranus, so this suggests that you you may often have very impressive or interesting revelations. Um, you know, sudden breakthroughs or epiphanies that just come to you kind of out of nowhere. Um, I think sometimes this will be brought on by the information that you obtain, but other times these things will just come out of nowhere. Like all of a sudden you just have this huge realization. And I think this is largely what you are all about you you know like i said you love learning and you love expanding your consciousness um so yeah very, very interesting stuff i think that's a lot of what you are about other than that though i do want to mention that you do have mercury and capricorn that is a little bit unusual most people have mercury in the same sign as their sun um this basically just means that the way you communicate and think and the way you handle information is a little bit different than perhaps the typical Aquarius Sun person. Having Mercury and Capricorn makes you very grounded and very realistic. You aren't interested in any kind of any kind of thinking or feeling unless you know that it's very stable, grounded, and it's gonna work in the long term. So I think this is kind of nice, you know, um if you just had a lot of air placements or a lot of air energy, like, you know, like your sun and moon are, um, you know, you would be excellent with learning, like I mentioned, but you may kind of have the tendency to be ungrounded at times and to be carried away with your thoughts or imagination. Um, but because you have Mercury and Capricorn, you st I would speculate you still do have a pretty vivid imagination. And this is part of what allows you to learn such complex and impressive concepts <clears throat> but having Mercury and Capricorn means that you you stay with one foot on the ground at all times if not both feet on the ground you you know you you really want to make sure that whatever you're doing whatever you're investing time in is gonna last for the long term um, okay and then let's kind of just jump around to oh one more thing about that too so I would so judging kind of from a culmination of different um, placements, your Sun in Aquarius, Moon in Gemini, Mercury in Capricorn. <clears throat> From all of these, I would speculate that you are very direct. The way you communicate is a little bit, you know, blunt at times and very objective. You want to be sure, or let me rephrase that. I think you would naturally kind of ensure that the way you communicate is objective and not clouded by any kind of emotion or personal bias. You want to, you, you naturally um, strive for, I don't know, finding the facts, you know, rather than thinking of, you know, is this true for me or what's my truth? You, you're focused on what is the truth. Let's be objective here. Let's find the information that works for everyone. And that works for the long term, if that makes sense. Um, okay. A little bit more about your kind of general personality here. So 
you have a really strong Mars placement. And I'll, I'll explain what that means or what I mean by that. But not only is Mars exalted in Capricorn here, so this is kind of the strongest Mars sign you could have in a way, um, but also Mars along with Mercury and Sun to, to a lesser extent. Um, Mars is at the top of your chart in the 10th house. Also, one more bit of astrological jargon before I explain what this means. Mars is also kind of loosely conjunct the south node. Um, south node is not on this chart, but it's always opposite the north node. North node is at 18 degrees Cancer, so south node is at 18 degrees Capricorn. It's only five degrees away from Mars. Um, so what all this means is you have very strong Mars energy. So what that so what that means is, um, <clears throat> you know, Mars in everyone's chart represents kind of their their warrior energy. So it's how do you fight for things? What do you fight for? Uh, what is your style of fighting? Also, how do you respond to confrontational or crisis situations? For you, Mars is in Capricorn. So this means that you are very strategic when it comes to these things. This warrior. This warrior energy for you is very strategic and it has the end game in mind. It has the long term in mind. <clears throat> um, excuse me. <clears throat> um, and because Mars is in such a strong position, well, but that's part of why Mars is so strong in Capricorn is because, you know, you are a military general. You're not so much a soldier or a warrior. You're more of a military general, so to speak. Um, you know, you're planning, you're maybe dictating, you're strategizing, <coughs> excuse me. Um, what else here? Mars is conjunct Capricorn or excuse me, Mars is conjunct Mercury in Capricorn. So this suggests that you're, you're very able to communicate a lot of this strategy that you have a lot of this, um, ambition as well. Um, you know, the two kind of go hand in hand, you, you come across maybe even a little bit aggressive at times or um you know very straightforward because your mercury is conjunct mars so you know you come across very confident very authoritative as well so this can be very powerful for you um mars conjunct the south node means that this energy is very close to you you've had this energy your entire life even from a very young child we'll talk about that more in the you know childhood part of this reading but um, <clears throat> but this is a very strong energy for you. Um, I'm actually going to hold off a little bit before the next, uh, category here before I talk a little bit more about that. Um, but other than that, let's kind of just look around to see anything else about the general personality. Um, <clears throat> so you do have Pisces rising, which I think is a little bit interesting because you don't have a lot of water placements. There is Venus in Pisces as well. Um, but for the most part, your, your, the main focus I see for your chart is Aquarius, Gemini, Capricorn. So these signs are very, you know, factual, detached, very objective. So it's very different that you have rising in Pisces. So this means that the way you come across is actually much different than how you actually are. You may come across a little bit sensitive, a little bit soft or shy. You're very approachable. <clears throat> um, what else here? Pretty much just that. And Pisces rising is interesting because however, uh, no matter who is looking at you or interacting with you, they always kind of see what they want to see. They sort of project on you. So many people, when they see you, they won't actually understand who you are. This is even more true because Pisces rising for you is very different than most of your other placements. It really doesn't connect with a lot of your your chart um <clears throat> so in other words like people see you as being soft maybe soft spoken shy um i don't know, even timid maybe at times or um you know very definitely very approachable people feel safe with you feel comfortable but really you know you're not such a shy soft spoken or you know soft person i see you as, like i said i see you as being very objective very direct uh very factual you know and also people may see you as being more sensitive or emotional than you actually are i think in reality you're actually very detached um, you do of course have emotions everyone has emotions but the way you experience them is different than most people you experience emotion by analyzing it and detaching from it observing it 
just like you would most things. Um, you know, you want to observe the pattern, the patterns in emotion. You view emotion oftentimes as a problem that needs to be solved or something that can be improved. And that's another thing too I haven't mentioned yet. You're sort of perpetually seeking to improve everything in a way. Um, you want to come up with not only the little everyday solutions to improve this or that and tweak this or that, you also want to come up with much larger scale improvements, improvements that could help, <clears throat> again, in the long term. A lot of what you're focused about is the very long term. Um, you're almost more focused in the long term than you are in the here and now, I think. Um, so you want to come up with solutions that can really help um, either yourself in the long run or maybe help society or help you know, people. But, um, but again, all of this is from a very kind of factual mental mentally oriented aspect um so that's why i say i think it's very interesting that when people f first meet you they may think that you're more sensitive more emotional than you actually are um you do have emotions but they are scrutinized you scrutinize your own emotions you you tame them you learn about them and you dissect them almost like they're <clears throat> you know something that's meant to be studied but again, I think this is partially because you study everything in a way. You're always kind of learning about everything. Um, okay, and then let me just do kind of a quick look around before I continue on with this reading here. Oh, one more part about that. I'll talk about this more in the romance and compatibility section of this reading. But um, I do think that you would be much more sensitive and emotional when you're engaging in romantic relationships or romantic experiences. And this is because of your Venus in 12th house Pisces. But this is, that's a whole kind of can of worms that we'll get into in just a moment here. <coughs> Excuse me. One more thing too. So you do have South Node in 10th house. And that's another thing too. So because you were born roughly midday, you know, 11, 11 a.m., <coughs> you have um, basically the inner planets. Most of the inner planets are at the top of the chart. Sun, Mars, and Mercury are in the 11th and 10th houses. Um, so this basically means that you are comfortable in the limelight, in public spaces. You are comfortable at work or in public, um, you know, specifically with the way you communicate and, and, and your ambitions. You, you have many ambitions that involve, I don't know, some kind of reputation or, you know, being known for what you do. You, you want that, you seek that. <clears throat> um, and because you have South Node in the 10th house, this means that you're very comfortable, you know, you're comfortable in a very deep kind of level in public, you know, when you, <clears throat> when you're in the spotlight or when you're getting attention or, or when it comes to just having a strong reputation in general, all of these things, you know, like, you know, you've done this before. This is... All these things are, are things that you have been comfortable with, even as a young child, even, you know, until now. Um, so these are things that you seek. This is your comfort zone. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, but being in public, you know, having a strong reputation, you may be very good at those things for sure. I, I would speculate that you, this is, like I said, it's your comfort zone. You, you strive in these areas. You, you, you thrive in these areas. Um, but there is a challenge there as well we'll talk more about that in just a moment okay with that being said let's start the kind of childhood past life themes challenges um and i'd actually want to kind of just resume what i was talking about there so so because you have south node in the 10th house although you thrive in public and in your career and there's a lot of there are a lot of strengths here that i want to mention real quick too so um there, there is huge strength in this and people see this strength in you. This is something that everyone, you know, you have a very prominent reputation. That's how, what I would speculate. The downside that comes with this is that for one, you know, there's a much more challenging part of your life, which has to do with home and family. Um, you know, you may be much more comfortable out and about in public. It's much more difficult for you to go home, basically. Home has always been a difficult area. Um, 
and we'll talk more about that in just a just a second here but other than that too you know the more you stay in public and you know the more you delve into your career and your reputation although you have a lot of strengths here this isn't the area that you're going to grow in a lot in this lifetime this is the area that you come into this lifetime you know you already kind of know this area so you're very strong here but there's there's not much there for you to learn with or grow with if that makes sense you know you've kind of learned enough there already north node is in fourth house cancer so that's showing that although it may be uncomfortable the more time you spend at home or with family the more you will actually thrive there with time that's the area that you can grow the most in in this lifetime um, and I think this will be very challenging for you because you have not only North Node and Fourth House Cancer, you also have Saturn there as well. Excuse me. Um, both these placements show that, well, it's not comfort for, comfortable for you to be at home or with close family. I think a lot of this stems from, you know, your upbringing as well, which we can talk about. But it looks like home and family were never a comfortable place for you. You never really felt like you had home or family <clears throat> in the kind of truest sense of those words in other words you may have had a home or family but you didn't <clears throat> you didn't feel comfortable there you didn't feel like you could let your guard down and be your true authentic self there and that's what home and family are supposed to be all about so if you can't let your guard down and be emotionally vulnerable and emotionally safe you know is it truly a home is it truly a family not really so this is a huge challenge for you and it's something that may take many years for you to to grow more comfortable with or to overcome um you know especially the first 30 years of life i, I would speculate it would be very difficult um the way i see this going of course this will be affected by your own free will but i think the most likely probability is that you grow up not feeling like you have a home or a family um, and the difficult part of this is that basically you have the task to create your own home, to create your own family. With time, you will be a leader in these areas. But the challenge is you have to do this on your own with no help from anyone else. Um, this is not something that's going to be given to you by any means. So, um, so this will take time, but you know, with time you will learn basically how to do it yourself since you were never given that, you never had it on your own, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I would say this is especially difficult. Wherever Saturn is in our charts is always a challenge, especially early on. <coughs> I'm so sorry. But, um, but especially for you having Saturn in Cancer, this is a particularly difficult Saturn placement to have because Saturn is in detriment in Cancer. In other words, wherever Saturn is, it challenges us. But being in Cancer, Cancer is a, a very emotional science, very soft. It represents for all of us, you know, a very private kind of area, a very sensitive area. Um, so having Saturn there, which, you know, challenges us to be better and is very, um, you know, kind of author it's an authoritative energy, is particularly difficult. So, you know, this will take time for you for sure. I would say definitely the first 30 years of life will be definitely a challenge with home and family. Um, it may even take longer than that. The combination of Saturn and the North Node there are very difficult. I will definitely not sugarcoat it. Um, but having both of them there does increase the potential. It, you know, there, there, in other words, there is huge potential there. You know, it may be very uncomfortable, but the more you spend time with your home and family or the more you engage in activities which basically result in you creating your own sense of home or family that's that's kind of the i'm picturing like a an electric bolt or like a gold that's like the gold mine for you um that's what's going to really strengthen you and this is part of a double-sided axis very literally so basically what i mean by that is yes you're very strong in your career and reputation but that will not be maintained if you don't learn to have a strong home and family. The two, there are two different sides of the same coin. 
Um, or a different way of putting it would be the more you learn to embrace your home and family or create a sense of family or home on your own, the more that will re revitalize and strengthen your career and reputation even more. You can't have one without the other. Um, but the way I would see this going is early in life, you will probably just focus on your career and reputation and neglect your home and family. And you can get, you know, somewhat far by doing that. But like I said, if you really want to go to the next level, you're going to have to address these issues and probably traumas related to your home and family. You know, of course, like I said, that's not easy to do. It's going to take time. But typically, once we reach our 30s, you know, we have what's called a Saturn return in our late 20s, um, basically where we have to confront a lot of these traumas, themes, responsibilities, you know, we have, we have to, um, usually we deal with increased responsibility at this time that we have to deal with on our own. So I'd speculate that, you know, once you go through that and then enter your 30s, you will probably have, you know, you probably already have much of a, a stronger grasp on these things than perhaps you did at a younger age. And, um, but you know, these things can take time and then going into your thirties, forties and beyond, typically speaking, we tend to become much better at dealing with these types of things. So in other words, you know, I would speculate that, you know, as you get into these middle and kind of late stages of life, I would speculate by then, Hopefully, ideally, you will learn to create your own sense of home and family and actually be the leader of your home. You're the one that is meant to create it. Um, you, you have to create it if you are to have it at all, basically. Um, so that is very difficult. It is tough, but it results in you being a master in this area. You would be a master in this area because everything you've learned, everything you've done you know, with creating a home and family, you've done on your own. That's what makes your knowledge and experience so valuable. So very difficult, but very valuable as well. Um, other than that, let's talk about some a little bit, you know, lighter kind of topics. Let's talk about your, let's talk about your childhood a little bit here. Kind of just look at that. So for, for childhood, I look to the IC definitely. So we've already kind of covered that, but just to do a really quick recap here, what the, what the, um, or excuse me, the South Node, not the IC. But what the South Node has to do with your, your childhood, um, basically the South Node is our best astrological placement for looking at past life material. Um, I'll circle back to childhood in just a moment here. But for you, the South Node is 18 degrees Capricorn, and it's conjunct Mars, like I said. So South Node in 10th house Capricorn means you were likely a very prominent person in a past life. You were a king, queen, CEO, some kind of leader, you know, that answered to thousands or millions of people. Um, you know, you may have been like a celebrity, someone that everyone knew about, very prominent. Um, and I know this may sound kind of uh, cliche, you know, I definitely don't say this to everyone if, if that's what you're wondering. Um, you know, I, I'm not intending to flatter you or you know, glamorize this at all because there are challenges that come with this. I don't view it as higher or lower than any other kind of role. Um, but South Node in 10th house Capricorn, that's definitely what I would see. You know, if anything, you may have been a person who, although everyone knew about you, you actually spent a lot of time alone. Um, South Node in Capricorn would be the, the CEO in their kind of corner office or the king or queen in their own kind of separate royal room or palace like away from everyone else so even though everyone knew about you and you were in charge you were the head of honcho you may have been alone a lot though in that lifetime as well you know you may have like i don't know what another example would be you may have had a lot of time like giving speeches or with advisors or whatever but at the same time there's a lot of time you know these these roles can actually be very isolating as well um what else you also have south Road conjunct Mars. So this brings about this kind of warrior energy. So you may have been like a warlord or you may have been a very aggressive type of ruler or leader. Um, you know, very ambitious for sure. There's a lot of ambition here. Um, a lot of dopamine. 
so you know many people are interested to hear what they may have done in a past life i can't tell you exactly what you did but that is definitely the probability something along those lines i can see that you know those themes there um, but the main reason really why i bring these things up is because that is the energy that you come with into this life that's why i think that's why we can see it in your chart really here um, so this means that when you come into this life you you embody that that energy even as a young child you have this kind of regal or like you know leadership very authoritative for sure very maybe demanding at times um, but very confident very sure of yourself um, so this is interesting this is something that you would always have in your life but you know even as a young child if we look in your chart to see what you may have been like as a child that is a huge part of it very very sure of yourself very confident very precocious um, other than that, we can also look to the IC. The IC is at 29 degrees Gemini. So, so this is a much different type of energy. Um, this means that you may have been, well, most people, most children that have IC in Gemini do spend a lot of time alone. They have very vivid imaginations, and so they often create imaginary friends for themselves, uh, or they talk to themselves. They're very talkative, very chatty. But for some reason, there's this theme involving spending a lot of time alone. You know, so spending a lot of time alone combined with that vivid imagination and chatty energy makes them kind of just invent characters to talk to or talk with. And uh, real quick here, so there is this kind of dichotomy of the IC midheaven axis. So basically, basically for some reason, you know, because you were so imaginative and talkative as a child um, this actually creates the environment for or the setup for a very charismatic public uh, a very charismatic way of being in public or being in um, the limelight later in life but it for some reason it stems from that kind of imaginary friend type of energy uh, we'll talk more about that in the occupational part of the reading um, let's see, other than that, I can look to see what your home environment may have been like. Um, so in your chart, the sun and the moon are trining one another. Uh, moon is only four degrees away from trining the sun. So what this means is that your parents were likely very similar. If you did grow up with both parents, they probably had a lot in common. They may have both been very intellectual, just like you are. Um, they emphasized learning and because they were similar to one another there was a lot of consistency with you growing up you knew what was expected of you um what else you knew you know you, yeah i mean pretty much just that you knew you knew what to expect and you knew what was expected of you um so because of this this is kind of the environment you know it's this part of your environment growing up that's what creates your kind of the part of you that kind of has no filter in a way like you you tend to be very decisive um you can sometimes be you can sometimes have a cluttered mind or you can sometimes be burdened by too much information but for the most part you're very decisive so you don't necessarily have to have a filter like other people do if that makes sense and um, this basically stems from that consistency you had growing up <clears throat> um okay but that's pretty much what i can see for your childhood past life themes and and as well as the challenges in this life that you are sort of tasked with um let's talk about Let's talk about the occupational part of the reading. So what are you, what, what kind of career would be best suited for you? Um, what kind of skills do you have that could be utilized in a career? Stuff like that. So, um, so you know, usually by now, I've already talked about a lot of strengths that you have. So definitely very intellectual, very intelligent. You can accumulate, you know, or I don't know if that's the right word. You can integrate, accumulate information very rapidly whether it be very mundane, shallow information or very deep, profound information. I think that you're very excellent with all of that. So that could definitely be very relevant for a career. We also talked about how you have Sun, Mars and Mercury at the top of your chart. 
you have a lot of energy in your 10th house. So this means that you have a very prominent reputation as well. So you may be, you know, fit for some kind of leadership position for sure. Um, <clears throat> so already right off the bat, we could talk about, you know, some kind of leader that deals with a lot of information. That could be definitely a lot of different things. Um, but, you know, definitely some strengths there that I think could be utilized. Um, you're also focused on solving problems. I almost think of like an inventor or a scientist of some kind. Scientist, doctor, maybe something like that. Um, or maybe the leader of a company that deals with something having to do with a lot of information or fixing problems. Um, we can also look to the position of the midheaven to see what kind of role you would play in public. So I touched on this just a little bit here. You do have midheaven and Sagittarius. It's at 29 degrees Sagittarius, and it's actually conjunct the galactic center. Uh, it's off by a couple degrees, but uh, okay. So this means that you have a very charismatic um, air about you in public and at work. You come across relatable, you come across fun and energetic. And, you know, I just chuckle a little bit because I think this is a little bit different than how you typically are. Like I mentioned before, you're typically very kind of uh, very authoritative, very kind of cut and dry, very straightforward. Um, so I do think it's a very nice compliment to your chart that the way you come across in public is, is a little bit kind of fun and jovial. Um, I think this makes you a little bit less threatening to people in, in the public space, if that makes sense. Um, so this is very valuable. This, this combined with your already authoritative nature is perfect for leadership for sure. Um, doing something where you are the head honcho, you're the number one person, you are the spokesperson of the company or of the group or what have you, you're someone who deals with people from many different walks of life, you know, you have to deal with, you know, you have to speak with other leaders, you have to speak with handymen and, you know, everywhere in between or, or whatever it is, you know. Um, so this, you know, you already had a lot of quality is fit for being a leader that we talked about, but Midheaven and Sagittarius, I think, really strengthens a lot of that as well. Um, what else here? Um, sometimes we can also look to the position that the ruler of the Midheaven is to get some clues on your career. For you, Midheaven is in Sagittarius, so it's ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is in sixth house Virgo. <clears throat> so this, this strengthens the, you know, kind of what I already mentioned having to do with you are f fixed on solving problems. You want to improve things. You want to seek increased efficiency. That's going to be a huge part of your career. Fixing things, helping other people, helping you fix, solve problems. I know that could be a little bit vague, but um, it's, I think, still helpful. It's still part of the equation. So... So basically, you know, these are the themes that have to do with your career, your occupation. If you can find a career that involves all of those, that's what you're going to be best suited at. That will, you know, really utilize many of your strengths. And that's something that you're, you will be satisfied with as well. So, so like I said, doctor, inventor, lawyer, maybe, um, <laughs> someone, you know, I could definitely see business owner or even even politician maybe most at least america most american politicians do not have gemini man it's definitely not unheard of um but there tends to be a lot of sturdiness and stability required from a politician i do think you would have that though with your son in aquarius and then your capricorn placement so you could be an excellent speaker politician leader doctor lawyer a lot of kind of high profile jobs and again i'm not saying that to flatter you in any way um, but with these placements, that's what I would see for sure. You are definitely someone who can handle a lot of responsibility, someone who's very accountable, um, someone, again, very authoritative with that dash of charisma to make you appealing and um, approachable as well. So, you know, bottom line, excellent with information, excellent leadership qualities for sure.
So ho hopefully that kind of narrows it down or helps you a little bit. Okay, let's move on to romance and compatibility. So um, for this, we look to Venus and Mars. Venus and Mars mostly have to do with attraction, desire, love, romance, sexuality. Uh, so of course, these are huge parts of compatibility. <clears throat> but the one placement I would look to even more than Venus or Mars for long-term compatibility compatibility would be the descendant and the ascendant descendant axis so first let's talk about venus and mars then we'll talk about the descendant so for you you have venus in pisces mars in capricorn the combination of these means that you're attracted to people that are a little bit more introverted a little bit more independent maybe or you know people that kind of keep to themselves someone very thoughtful or contemplative for sure um <clears throat> Let's talk about Mars and Capricorn really quick here. So, like I mentioned, Mars is a very strong place for you. It's about as strong as it can possibly get. Let's just say that. So, 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 so you have a very bold, confident energy to you. This may be in a kind of, I, I would speculate it's in an introverted kind of way. So, it's, it's that kind of quiet confidence. But it's, it's quiet but loud at the same time. So, you know, this may be something that you're not really flaunting, you're not really showing off, but everyone can kind of sense it, that you have this really strong inner confidence, if that makes sense. Um, so this, this applies to your sex life as well. Mars is very strong, so this means that you have a very high sex drive, but I would speculate that this is something you keep very much under wraps. This is not something you express with anyone other than that partner that you are involved with really um you know this is typical with ca uh, capricorn energy specifically mars and capricorn uh, but but yeah so you you are i forget the term but you know you can be very wild when it's in a very controlled environment when it's with someone that you very much trust um then you you can get very kind of elaborate or intense um but you know, this is, again, like I said, this is very private. You do not, I would not speculate that you are one to talk about any kind of sexual matters with, you know, with really anyone at all. It's just something that you do with that kind of private um, environment. Um, so you're going to be most sexually compatible with someone like Capricorn. Someone kind of private, someone that has that inner confidence as well. Someone very practical, down to earth. This may be literally people with strong Capricorn placements. They could also have strong Taurus or Virgo placements as well. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to that in just a moment here. But Venus and Pisces, let's talk about that here. So this means that you are... Uh, <laughs> um, I'm thinking this is a man's chart for some reason. I don't know why. That really doesn't make any sense. But... Uh, but some people say that Venus represents what you'd be attracted to in a woman and Mars represents what you'd be attracted to in a man. I believe that because we all have both feminine and masculine energies, these things do tend to blend a little bit. So in other words, whether you're attracted to females or males, <clears throat> both Venus and Mars will be aspects of what you are attracted to either way. Uh, they may just be more or less so depending on what gender you are seeking, if that makes sense. But... Um, but Venus and Pisces, it can symbolize that you're attracted to a Piscean kind of woman or, or you're attracted to someone with Pisces-like traits. So someone emotional, someone sensitive, probably someone much more sensitive than yourself. Like I talked about earlier, you know, you are very factual, very logical, very detached. You are not one to display overwhelming displays of emotion unless they are like ambitious or frustrated you know talking about that strong mars those are emotional as well but when it comes to like sappy or sad type of emotions they really are not your style at all i really don't see that in your chart at all but what's interesting is you may be attracted to a person especially a woman could be a man too but you may be attracted to someone who is a little bit more sensitive sensual somber um someone a little bit more uh i don't know a little bit more sentimental that's the word i was looking for um 
emotional, intuitive, creative. Um, and this is something very interesting to me because it's Venus is in 12th house. So this is kind of subconscious to you. This is something that probably won't come out in a very visceral way until at least your 20s or maybe even in, in your 30s. <clears throat> um, you tend to hide a lot of your romantic feelings and you don't intend to do this. It's just something that you do subconsciously. Um, in other words, a lot of your romantic attraction and feelings are kind of obscure and difficult to place even for yourself, but they are there. And I'm telling you, I can tell you, I can see them in your chart. You know, I can tell you that you're, you're wanting someone a little bit more sensitive and soft, but like I said earlier in life, you probably will not know this. You would probably run away from this. You probably would think that you do not want that at all. I would definitely say that overwhelming displays of emotion would be very uncomfortable for you, for sure. So there has to be some kind of balance there. But I do think with time, ideally, I think you'll seek this out. Someone a little bit more soft, who wears their heart on their sleeve a little bit. That's what's going to allow you to feel safe and comfortable. Of course, it has to be done in the right way. It can't be too emotional. Uh, but if someone does have a little bit of that softness or that emotionality to them, it will allow you to kind of relax in a way uh, that is very deep and profound for you. And you, what's very surprising, very unlike your how your nature is normally, um, is that I think the more you engage in a romantic situation with someone who is like that you know, who is wears their heart on their sleeve and who's more sensitive and, and whatnot the more you engage with someone like that the more you will become that way as well and I think for you this is kind of a nice balance because like I mentioned many times um, you are just typically not like that at all you, you can be very ruthless you can you know because for you typically it's all about the data it's all about the information as long as you are correct you don't really care if your delivery is upsetting to others or you know inconsiderate of others feelings because for you it's all about the data what's right is right you know it's almost like a math problem or like an equation if that's the answer then that's the answer and it doesn't matter what anyone feels about it or anything you know and that's not a bad way to go about things for sure but um you know adding in a little bit of this kind of Venus and Pisces energy, um, it will just allow you to have a little bit of softness. You could have a little bit of honey in your delivery, so to speak, or a little bit of um, diplomacy, maybe. You know what I mean? So um, so you definitely don't have to embrace that, but I do think it would be something that would be advantageous, not only for you personally, but also for others in your life as well. Um, you know, you, you can allow yourself to to embrace that little bit of sensitivity or softness. Um, but, but yeah, one more time that, that will come with time for sure. It will take a very kind of, um, certain personality type to conjure that up from you. But in the most mundane terms, Venus and Pisces signifies that you would be attracted to Pisces like people, especially women. So, this could be someone who has strong Pisces placements or someone with Scorpio or Cancer placements as well, since those are fellow water signs. Um, okay, but the most important for last, the descendant in, you have your descendant in Virgo. So, um, so to me, the descendant represents the kind of partner you best work with, especially in a long-term situation. Um, so this applies not only romantically but this is also any kind of partnership you know a business partnership a best friend whatever it is but um, this is definitely very relevant when it comes to romantic compatibility um, so for you you have Pisces rising you have a Virgo descendant this means that you want to be or you best work with someone who is very responsible very practical very kind of detail oriented no nonsense I think this works pretty easily for you because this matches up with a lot of what you already are. You have a lot of these traits. Um, so you're going to not only have a lot in common with this kind of person, but they're also going to balance you. Um, so this could be someone who literally has a lot of Virgo placements, or it could just be someone who represents 
traits familiar to Virgo. Um, could also be someone who has strong Capricorn or Taurus placements because these are all earth signs. Any of these signs will be practical, organized, um, very consistent, very down to earth, I guess you could say. Um, you know, Capricorn in particular could be very compatible because not only is it similar to Virgo where you have your descendant, but also you have Mercury and Mars and South Node there. So in other words, people with strong Capricorn placements, you will relate to, you can communicate with very easily. Uh, you have sexual chemistry with them and you relate to them on a very deep level. Like you're very familiar with people who have Capricorn placements. Even if you are just getting to know them, you already kind of know them, if that makes sense. Um, so, so, so to sum it up, I would say Capricorn and Virgo would be your most compatible signs. Maybe Taurus as well, for sure. Um, and at this point, I like to kind of just run through the different elements to see what signs you are attracted to out of, out of all of them, basically. Um, so any of the earth signs, definitely, that would be my first go-to. I would say they need to have some kind of earth energy in their charts for you to have that compatibility, especially Capricorn or Virgo. Other than that, let's talk about the air signs. So you do have sun and moon and air signs. So any of the air signs that would be Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, you will relate to a lot as well because you have a lot of that energy. You know, I started this reading by saying that you're very interested in people. You're interested in information. You're intellectual. Any, or, well, I should say most people who have very, any anyone who has strong air energy, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, they will share those themes as well. So you'll have a lot in common. It'll be easy to relate with them. I think if they just have a lot of air energy and nothing else, you will just be friends. There's not going to be any kind of romantic chemistry, you know, especially these very kind of chatty characters, chat, chatty intellectual people. You can relate to them. You can be best buddies. You know, you can understand each other, but there's not going to be that romantic pull unless there are some heavier kind of energies there like earth or water mostly earth but water too um so air air signs in themselves i'd say friend energy for you but that could be part of something more if they have other things going on in their charts <clears throat> um let's talk about the the water signs so that gets a little bit interesting um you do have ascendant in pisces typically i say the element of your ascendant is for friendship but you also have venus and pisces as well so pisces is actually another sign that could be very interesting for compatibility you will not only relate to pisces people which is again kind of interesting because you aren't usually anything like pisces um in other words you aren't usually very sentimental sensitive emotional emotionally intuitive but you do have this kind of mysterious connection with Pisces people, with people who are like that, with people who have strong Pisces placements. And you have this very strong attraction there as well. It's a subconscious attraction, but it's definitely there with Venus and Pisces. Um, so Pisces could actually be definitely, you know, a potential partner as well. Um, I think that's the last major um, compatible majorly compatible sign I could see. Uh, Capricorn, Virgo, the air signs on kind of on a friendship level. And then Pisces is another. If I had to narrow it down to three signs, I would say Virgo, Capricorn, and Pisces. And then with like a sub note for, for air signs in a way. Um, but other than that, for Cancer and Scorpio, I see a lesser amount of compatibility there. Cancer is going to be very difficult. I think, you know, especially for a romantic relationship, I don't see that working. If anything, maybe later in life. But but you're the kind of person that really likes to focus on the long term and kind of settle down early, I think. So I don't think you'd be really looking for a relationship later in life. Um with North Node and Saturn in Cancer, people with strong Cancer energy will, they will help you to learn a lot. So there could be a lot um, to help you evolve and learn, but none of that is 
fun. It's very challenging type of stuff. It's very much out of your comfort zone. And it's very different than what you naturally are. You have all your energy. You have much of your energy in Aquarius and Capricorn. Very different than Cancer. So I think for the most part, Cancer will be an uncomfortable energy for you. People with placements there, they may be, you know, they wear their heart on their sleeve kind of like Pisces, but it may not be in the right way for you. It may be kind of too emotional or too... It may come across overbearing for you or too, I don't know, too different. Same with Scorpio. Scorpio is very emotionally intense. That's going to be very different than what you are. Um, you know, you have no placements in Scorpio. I really don't see... Water signs in general, I don't see compatibility with other than Pisces. Pisces is kind of an interesting exception. But for Cancer and Scorpio, I, I really don't see it working very well for friends or family. Um, and then lastly, for the fire signs, what's really interesting is you have almost no placements in the fire signs. You have Pluto and Leo, um, but really not much else going on there. So when we don't have planets in an element, we tend to seek that out. Um, and this can go one of two ways. One way this can go is because you lack this energy, you seek it out. It's very captivating. Um, you know, fire signs are very outgoing. They're very relatable. They can be childlike at times, but they're very energetic, very passionate. Uh, they can be individualistic, very spontaneous, very impulsive. So for you, someone who represents those traits will be very interesting because you are not like that at all. This is someone very different than how you are. So it can be elusive. It can be captivating. You can be drawn to that because in one, in some way, it kind of balances you. So if you can bridge your differences and, you know, um, be tolerant of each other's differences, you can benefit each other greatly because they will show you how to be maybe a little bit more enthusiastic or spontaneous, a little bit more passionate or, I don't know, fiery, I guess. Um, and you are much more strategic. You have the foresight. You have the, I don't know, the ability to detach and observe things objectively, which most fire signs do not. Um, so you, there is intense potential there for mutual benefit, for, for a complementary relationship with fire signs. The other way it could go, though, is that you are too dif different. You won't bridge your differences. You have... You have nothing in common to, you know, to, um, to, to build a bridge of understanding or compassion. You know, you're just too different. You may annoy or irritate each other. Um, I do think this is very difficult to maintain, especially a close relationship with. I think maybe some kind of, some kind of acquaintance or, you know, friend could maybe work and you could utilize those differences to help one another. But I think especially for a deep, you know, very personal relationship, I really don't see that working. You you just be too different. There's nothing in common there, really. Um, again, what you're really looking for is someone like Virgo, someone who's organized, practical, down to earth, someone modest, someone humble. Fire signs will not be those things, really. Okay, so that's what I see for your chart. At this point in the reading, I like to just kind of look over the chart to see if there's anything I may have missed, anything I wanted to mention. I did want to mention actually a dynamic that affects how you approach relationships. Um, so not only do you have Venus in 12th house, so this means that you may be kind of late in life to engaging with romantic experiences. Um, you know, especially... I'm not really even talking about sexual experiences. I'm more talking about like falling in love or having feelings like that. You know, all these things will always be kind of elusive to you. That's why they become late in life. But not only is that, you know, a factor in this equation, but also you have Neptune in seventh house. So this also means that relationships are kind of a mystery to you. Not only not only are relationships a mystery to you, but you tend to be attracted to or partner up with people that are mysterious themselves people that are kind of they're constantly changing their intentions may not be really very clear um and i just think this is very interesting when we again go back to how your your personality is you're very clear you're very objective you're very straightforward maybe that's why you tend to be attracted to people that are so mysterious maybe you 
are such an excellent learner, an excellent student, that more straightforward potential mates are boring or too simple. I think you like a, a puzzle. You like a problem to solve. Um, so that can be dangerous. You know, that can be dysfunctional when it's applied to relationships. But on the other hand, being attracted to someone that you don't always completely understand can actually work in the long term if you are satisfied with that. Um, I honestly, I think I see that as I see that being the most likely uh, result for you, or re- most likely thing to happen. Um, I see you being with someone a little bit mysterious, or having a relationship that you know you may not always understand each other, but maybe that's okay to some extent. Uh, maybe you are with someone kind of creative and imaginative and artistic. Um, okay, other than that, let me kind of just look around here real quick. I think I covered most of everything. You do have Jupiter conjunct the descendant, which is pretty interesting. And Jupiter is in sixth house Virgo. I wanted to mention, you know, just a quick shout out for that. Jupiter in sixth house Virgo indicates a really strong potential for excellent health. Um, I think part of this has to do with your very kind of factual, uh, down-to-earth nature. You're, you're always focused on efficiency and solving problems, so that would affect, you know, your relationship with your own health in a positive way, I think. Um, but also Jupiter, Virgo, Sixth House. Jupiter is the expander. It brings abundance, and it's in Virgo, Sixth House, which symbolizes health and daily life. So, you you know, it shows that you have a strong health. You you may find your greatest abundance with um, daily regimens or routine as well. Also, Jupiter's conjunct the descendant, so this means that you have a lot of abundance that comes to you from your relationships, from partnerships. Again, that you know definitely applies to romantic relationships, but it could also be business partnerships, any other kind of partnerships, etc. You may attract people that are outgoing, boisterous, they wear their heart on their sleeve, they're very well learned, they're very adventurous. Um, That's kind of just who you attract generally. But it's interesting because you also attract people that are down to earth, practical, organized, which is very different. But I see, specifically if we talk about a romantic relationship, I could see you attracting someone who is simultaneously both. Someone detail oriented, practical, down to earth, but also adventurous, boisterous, outgoing at the same time. Um, let's see. One last thing. I, I didn't realize this would all apply to relationships. Otherwise, I would just include it in that category. But you also have Chiron in the, the seventh house conjunct the descendant to out of sign conjunction. But um, so this, this means that you may have some very profound experiences with partnerships especially romantic relationships um experiences where either you help the other person go through some kind of trauma that they're going through that maybe you have gone through in the past or it could work the other way too maybe someone else has experienced something that you're going through and they use their knowledge or experience to help you Um, but these things can be very intense very therapeutic very um uncomfortable but productive spiritually or emotionally uh, but again that that's going to come to you from these kind of partnership or romantic experiences um let me just kind of look around here oh there is a well really two like quick just little tidbits i could mention um suddenly 11th house shows that you have again a very prominent reputation i know i already mentioned that but people just kind of naturally receive you very well. You naturally make connections in your community very easily. Another quick side note, you have Saturn retrograde in the fourth house. That is a strong indicator that your father was absent from your life. Um, So on the one hand, it looks like in your childhood, there was a lot of consistency, but at the same time, um, you may have spent part of your childhood absent of your father. And this is something that's common. Many people have these indicators but Saturn both Saturn retrograde as well as Saturn in the fourth house indicate an absent father 
Okay, but that's what I see for your chart. So of course, let me know if you have any questions at all. I'd be more than happy to go back over anything and, you know, expand on anything if you had any questions at this point. Um, but yeah, that's what I see for your chart. Definitely a very interesting one. Thank you for this opportunity to read your chart and I hope you have a great day. Okay, so that was the sample birth chart reading. Um, kind of in the last part of the reading, I did think of a couple things I wanted to mention that I didn't mention in the intro of this video. Um, so, you know, people ask, what would the length of the reading be? I never like to confine myself to saying exactly what the length of the reading would be, but I will tell you that all my readings tend to be between, I would say, 40 and 70 minutes long. Um, so in other words, you know, th they, they pretty much always are between 40 minutes and, you know, a little bit over an hour. Um, you know, and, and like you heard me just say, I always give the opportunity to ask, ask me questions. You know, it's not just a one and done, you know, you pay me, I give you a reading and I never talk to you again. Uh, to me, that opens up the communication. So if you did have a question, some people come to me and they have a deep enough question that they seek out another reading, or maybe it's just, you know, can you talk a little bit more about this or that, or can you explain this in a different way? You know, I'm more than happy to do that. You don't have to pay me again or anything like that. Um, you know, to me, that's part of the reading. I want to make sure you understand the, the information. Um, but yeah, when it comes to length, I would say 40 to 70 minutes. Um, it would be pretty unlikely that it would take me less or more time than that. Some charts are much simpler to explain. You can even be a very complex person, but have a chart that is very easy to explain in less words, if that makes sense. Some charts just take more words to explain. Um, you know, also just the tempo of my speaking is not, you know, it could be faster or slower depending on the day. There's many factors that affect how long a reading is that aren't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily always mean that you're getting more or less information just because a reading is longer or shorter. I want to make sure that what I say is, you know, of quality and that I'm saying it because I, I want to say it because I'm, you know, I don't want to be arbitrarily just talking just to meet a quota and fill up the time. You know what I mean? So that's why I am reluctant to give out a length for the readings, but you can expect 40 to 70 minutes is what I would say. Okay, so that's all I can think for, you know, talking about how I approach the readings, but I do feel like this reading was very typical of what you can expect, really. Um, it did get a little bit long, but then again, I guess I did talk for 10 minutes at the beginning, so about an hour long, that sounds about right. Um, but yeah, very interesting. I almost did feel like this was a real person that I was talking to, as you could maybe hear. Um, I don't know why, I don't know if I was just projecting, but I feel like it was like a man I was talking to for some reason. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just by looking at someone's chart, you can't really get a feel for, for this person. I don't know if anyone was born on Tuesday, January 23rd, 1945, 11, 11 a.m. in Topeka, Kansas, but that was just a random city name I thought of. Anyway, so hope you, I hope that this gives you a lot of information when it comes to birth chart readings and what to expect um, if you want that. But, uh, but yeah, hit me up if you want a reading. You can check out my website, manicmercurian.net, or you can email me directly, manic.mercurian at gmail.com. Um, yeah, so thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you guys later.